Using the locations of dozens of the artist's works, scientists say the sites are linked to just one candidate. The film's the story of what happened when this guy tried to make a documentary about me, but he was uh, actually a lot more interesting than I am. So um, now the film is kind of about him. Perpetually hidden in the shadows, a humble front for the world's most famous street artist, pulling off stunts like this one in Disneyland, hanging a dummy dressed like a Guantanamo Bay prisoner. His work spans the globe from London to New York to the West Bank, always with a message. In Bethlehem, he put a dove in a sniper's crosshairs. All in Britain. Welcome to Dismalland. Again, mocking Disney, as well as Europe's response to the migrant crisis, as well as celebrity culture. In New York's meatpacking district, he loaded a truck full of stuffed animals squeaking for help. And in the Bronx, he pointed a finger at privilege, showing a servant catering to a young graffiti artist. Occasionally, the message gets lost. Like in 2006, when he tried drawing attention to poverty by literally painting the elephant in the room. Animal rights activists were furious. It's exploitation and it's, it's meaningless and unnecessary and stupid. Banksy's work is also profitable. One sold at auction for $145,000. Some pieces are cut from the wall to be sold. Others are stolen and fans flock to Banksy exhibits. I always like to see uh, Banksy stuff. I'm a long-term Banksy fan. Because I love street art. I'm, it really is Banksy. And now the world may be closer to unmasking Banksy. Researchers in London use a technique called geographic profiling to identify a so-called anchor point by mapping 140 of the artist's works. The evidence, they say, zeroes in on Robin Gunningham, who was first ID'd by the tabloid Daily Mail in 2008. The study concedes it's difficult to make conclusive statements about Banksy's identity. Plus, Banksy and the Gunningham family deny any connection. So, for now, the mystery continues.